The question burning everyone's lips about this new lens issue is, is it really worth the money? Is the new Leica Classic steel rim Semilux M35 1.4 lens really worth 4,030 euros? Uh, no, it isn't. Yo, Mark 9, they really don't think we can keep doing this. They don't think we can keep making hits about cameras. But I'm the cameraman. But I'm the cameraman. Stay crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, started on a 50 mil lens. Now I'm about to bag 50 mil yen. I can shoot all day. Dans les six rims, ceux-là, c'est un 5 batch. Le Dans premier, le premier, il y a eu 5 173. Batch. Là, je te parle de choses euh, vraiment euh, de collectionneurs ou d'experts. De, hein. Parce que c'est des années de recherche et de discussion avec d'autres euh, membres de l'EICA qui les étudient. C'est vraiment des années de discussion et de savoir-faire sur le, 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 le premier. C'est en 1960, je crois. Je sais pas. Bonjour from Paris. It has been a minute and a half. About four years since my last video. This new Leica Lens review is just an excuse for me to talk about something that will hopefully help you grow as a photographer. First, I'm going to tell you all about the new Leica steel rim lens and how it compares to the original version and modern Leica Semilux 35 lenses. Then, to help you grow as a photographer, I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't buy any new lens or camera from any brands. We've been sold a bag of goods that does absolutely nothing for us. But first, the new Leica steel rim. You probably just skipped to the end of these review videos to get to the final verdict. Let me save you some time. I'll start with my final thoughts about the new Leica Classic Semilux M35 1.4 lens. First, to answer the title question, is the new 2022 Classic Semilux M35 1.4 lens reissue better than the original steel rim from the 1960s? No, it isn't. The original steel rim is better than the reissue, which really counts, better rendering, better colors, and cameras mirror more accurately with original lenses. The original film has better ergonomics, it feels better in my hands. It's sharper, wide open, has better contrast at f1.4, f1.7 and f2. Wide open, the glow is not as pronounced with the original film. That extra bit of sharpness and contrast gives you a faster fall off with a quick roll off into bokeh, providing you a very clear and clean 3D pop. Because of it, when used at f2, that wire factor is more pronounced with the original film. And on film, even on F8, an original steel rim keeps that 3D dimensionality rendering. Let's follow this one with a question now burning everyone's lips. It, then is the new Leica steel rim lens worth the money? No, it isn't. For most people, it's definitely not worth the price. The new steel rim reissue is both a missed opportunity and a failure on Leica's part. Unlike the 51.2 not deluxe and the summer on 28 5.6 ratio, the new steel rim is not a carbon copy of the original version. I wish Leica would have kept the exact same lens design with the 41 millimeter filter size of the original steel rim for this new steel rim classic reissue. Plus the box it comes in isn't anything special. The Olux lens that comes with the new steel rim is totally useless for most. Everyone I know puts a lens filter on their Leica lenses. On the new steel rim, you cannot use a lens filter and the new Olux lens at the same time. It doesn't work. Because of this, Leica includes a new screw-on lens hood with this classic lens reissue. The first version of this screw-on lens hood is kind of a joke. It introduces art vignetting when used with a lens filter, creating a problem while trying to solve one that shouldn't have been there in the first place. Leica put a lot of care in the three previous classic reissue, the 10 bar M90, the summer on 28, the Noctilux 50 are really great lenses. The design of this new steel rim lens seems sloppy to me. It feels like this was a rush job to get it to the market quickly. The new steel rim could have been the best classic lens reissue, but it wasn't. The filter side should have been 41 millimeter, just like on the original. The smaller filter side makes the lens look better and smaller. The knurling at the base of the lens should have been exactly like on the original, at the very base of the lens. On the new steel rim, the knurling is elevated from the base. The Infinity Focus Lock should have kept the same design as on the original visible and tactile. The Olux lens hood would have worked with an E41 filter on it, as it does on the original steel rim. Instead of including a cheap looking screw on lens hood, Leica could have included a new E41 clear lens filter for it, with an E41 yellow filter too, for black and white photographer. On the price you pay for the new steel rim, it should have been offered in both a silver chrome and a black chrome finish, leaving the choice of a color finish to the end user, the buyer, 
finally, the minimum focusing distance should have been 70 centimeters, not one meter. That one meter minimum focusing distance can be crippling. I say this because I had a chance to use four different original steel rim lenses. One of these original steel rim lenses was a goggle version made for M3 cameras with closer focusing distance, 65 centimeters. There's no question original lenses are better, be it rendering, build quality, handling, sharpness, color rendition, lens design, and overall looks. This new steel rim is a modern lens falling short of the previous Leica Classic lenses reissue. I don't think the new steel rim is a reissue, but more of a lesser reedition. Leica was aware of these issues about a year before it was announced. They gave this new lens to a select group of photographers and collectors who have and still use original steel rim lenses to have their impressions about the new lens. What I've just said pretty much sums up the exact same feedback given by some of the initial new steel rim beta testers. Leica cannot say they didn't know about the new lens shortcoming, they didn't seem to take that feedback into account. Had it been made the way I just wishfully described, this would have been the only lens I would have needed 98% of what I shoot. I would have purchased two, a silver chrome and a black chrome lens. The new steel rim is definitely not for everyone because first, the price point is way high for what you get. Second, when your subject is further away from you, wide open, the sharpness is low. Plus the allied bloom or the Leica glow is more pronounced with the new steel rim than it is with original steel rim lenses and 35 Sunlux version two lenses. Finally, it has a minimum focusing distance limit of one meter. That one meter minimum focusing distance limit alone can be a deal breaker for most. That's completely understandable. Forget about close up portraits. It's not happening with this lens. In its defense, a 35 millimeter lens is not really a portrait lens. You won't be able to make close up photos of your meals for your Instagram with it either. It's not that kind of a lens. Use your smartphone for those pictures. Had the new cell rim been made with a closer minimum focusing distance of 70 centimeters, similar to the original goggle version made for M3 cameras, it would have been the perfect modern 35mm lens for its small size. And because a portrait made of 65 centimeter with an original cell rim has a unique out of focus rendering, the bokeh is really fantastic with it. Plus at f1.7, an original close-up goggle cell rim lens when focusing on a subject 65 centimeters away seems as sharp to me in the center as the new Apple 35 Semicron M lens slightly closed down to f2.8. The Apple 35 Semicron M lens is arguably the sharpest Leica lens ever made, corner to corner. That alone should tell you how good original steel rim lens truly are. Anywho, all of this is debatable. And I mean, I, I bought this lens new at the end of October last year, on October 27 to be exact. A few days after it was officially announced. I love the photos I've been making with it because of its small size, how it flares, how it handles chromatic aberration and fringing. In terms of sharpness, wide open and slightly closed down, this is the worst Leica lens I own, especially when used wide open. And still, the new still rim is fast becoming one of my all-time favorite 35 millimeter modern lens because in high contrast situation, there's almost no fringing or chromatic aberrations with it. In this regards, it is better than a 35 Sunilux FLE, both versions of it, version one and version two, the latest one with close focusing. So if like me, you like shooting against the light, if you have the disposable income, if you're looking for something completely different and unique, it can be worth the money. But even if you can afford it, let's say you have extra cash burning oil in your pockets, even if you can expense it, this new lens fills a want more than a needs requirement. There's plenty of other 35 millimeter lenses options out there that can fill any professional photographer's enthusiast or creative's need way better, and I should know. This new steel rim 35 is my 15th Leica M lens I currently own. Of these 15 lenses, this is my fourth Leica M35 lens. Yes, I do have four different 35 Leica M lenses right now. I have a 35 Sumlux FLE version one, 35 Summicron version four, what some call the king of bokeh. Also have an Apple 35 Summicron, plus now this classic Sumlux M35 1.4, the new steel rim. In conclusion, the new steel rim turned me into a 35 millimeter focal length photographer. What all other 35 millimeter lenses never managed to do, and that's simply says I almost exclusively used it for a year, making me see the world in 35 millimeter frame lines. After all these years, I finally realized what was right in front of my eyes all this time. 35 millimeter lens is all I ever really needed. 
I'm seriously starting to think I could live with just one camera, one lens. But this new Stellium is not the one lens I would choose as my desert island lens. If you're just getting into the M system, in my opinion, the new 35 Semilux FLE with close focusing and integrated lens hood, or for less money if you prefer small lenses, a second lens and a conversion for, I would out a doubt, much better one lens option for the M system. I do recommend you go for the 35 Semicron version 4 over the new 35 FLE. The 35 Semicron version 4 rendering is more pleasing and it's less expensive. If money is no object, only one camera, one lens, I'd go for a Leica Apo 35 Semicron as my only lens because I already have one and for me it's almost perfect. I could end this lens review right here by simply stating the obvious. For this kind of money, there are preferable options within the price range of the new steel rim. And even for less money, there's plenty of options on the second-hand market that will perform as good or better than newer lenses. Plus, the original Silverm is better than new classic Samalux M35 1.4 ratio. No one should call the new Silverm a classic ratio. It should be called a modern re reinterpretation of a classic. That's a tough word to say. I cannot seriously recommend it to anyone. Don't buy it. But wait, there's more to it. Last October, I wanted silver chrome 35 as a complement to a silver chrome 50 for an analog silver chrome Leica MP camera. I debated getting the latest Samalux FLE in silver chrome with the integrated lens hood, but I bought the new Silverim because with my silver chrome MP camera, I only shoot black and white film, mostly Kodak 3X. I didn't say I needed it, just that I wanted it, and now I have one. I chose the new classic Samalux M35 1.4 because it is smaller than the new 35 FLE, and I wouldn't be able to take advantage of the close focusing on the new 35 FLE with a film range finder camera. Technically I could, but I wouldn't want to because I'd surely miss focus on all those photos. There's no live view with a film camera. Anything that is not coupled with a range finder, focusing closer than 70 centimeters is pretty much guesswork. It's not easy for me to nail close focus at 30 centimeter with an Apple 35 semicron lens wide open at f2, even when using live view with a digital M. It probably would be easier with a tripod, but I no longer use a tripod for my photography. I shoot everything NL, even at night. It has been my experience at nailing critical sharp close focus closer than 70 centimeter with a rangefinder camera, mainly with an Apple 35 and an M10 or an M10R is pretty much further a lot when shooting wide open an F2 and even an F4. So logically, it should be more difficult with the latest Semilux FLE wide open at F1.4. I'm just saying nailing critical sharp focus is not a walk in the park for me with a digital rangefinder camera to capture stationary subject at a distance of about 30 centimeters away. So for close up portraits, good luck with that. Don't just take my word for it. I recently watched a review by Gajan Balan is the bucket list lens video on YouTube about his experience with the new close focusing 35 Semilux FLE version two. He said close focusing was a great creative tool with an M lens for when you want to get closer to your subject. For him, it was worth getting this version of the lens to get in the personal space of the person from the camera. I want to highlight exactly what he said, even if the shot might not be perfectly in focus to fully fill that frame as opposed to cropping in. I'm just pointing out I'm not the only one having difficulty nailing perfect sharp close focus with a digital M camera. Personally, I wouldn't choose a 35 to get closer to my subject with a rangefinder. That's what a 50 mm lens is for, not a 35. 35 is great to get more in the environment, the context. It's what I really like about a 35, it's wider. But only one camera, one lens to get closer to the subject when needed in a pinch. Close focusing sure can help. Even with 35, why not? I tested the new 35 FLE with close focusing. It was easier to nail close focus at 40 centimeters with it than my experience has been nailing close focus at 30 centimeters away with a 35 Apple. That 10 centimeters seems to make a difference. There's that going for it. The new 35 FLE is not out that bad, but my Apple 35 focuses all the way down to 30 centimeters. It goes all the way to 11, if you know what I mean. The new 35 Samalux FLE keeps the same optical formula as the previous 35 FLE. It has two extra aperture blades and close focusing decoupling. Wide open, more aperture blades on the lens makes no difference to me. When I tested it for a few days, closed down, considering the shape of the aperture blade of the 35 Samalux FLE version 1, I thought a couple more aperture blades were not going to make any difference, or the bokeh much cleaner, or the bokeh balls rounder. 
Not that I care anyways, because good bokeh doesn't make a good photo good. I was wrong. At F2, F4, and at 5.6, it does make the bokeh balls rounder. But the rendering of the new 35 FLE version 2 released in 2023 is not as good as the lens it replaces, the version 1 that I had originally purchased in 2010. The new 35 FLE with close focusing is just as sharp as the lens it replaces, but to have it focused down to 40 centimeters, they move the aperture blade slightly forward. They may have the same optical formula, but the elements in the new version 2 FLE are not exactly in the same position within the lens barrel. It's a different lens. The rendering is not as pleasing as the previous FLE version 1. The difference is not major, but I can see it. The previous FLE, the 2010 version of the Leica 35 Summerlux lens is sharp, but the rendering is not the most pleasing of all the 35mm lens you can choose from from Leica. That's the reason I have 35 Summicron version 4. The 35 Summicron version 4 is more, has a more pleasing rendering to me than the 35 FLE. Yes, the 35 Summicron Summicron version 4 is that good and costs less. The new still rim is not the first only Leica lens I have with a one meter minimum focusing distance limit. That minimum focusing distance limit of one meter is really not a big deal for my work and for street photography. It was not a deal breaker when I decided to get the new still rim over the new 35 FLE. I still think it was a mistake on Leica's part to limit the new still rim close focus to one meter. Considering that original still rim lenses made for Leica for M3 cameras were able to focus down to 65 centimeters. I tested one of the original still rim lenses with goggles, perfectly coupled with a rangefinder at a distance of 70 centimeters. Made a few portraits of my kids and my wife at the park with it, and wow, those photos were truly fantastic. Had Leica made the new uh, focusing limit of 70 centimeters, it would probably be the only 35 millimeter modern lens I would need, not the 35 Apple, but they didn't. I may say it didn't bother me to have that one meter minimum focusing distance limit. That was until I tried an original still rim that focuses down to 70 centimeters. It would have been an almost exceptional lens with a closer minimum focusing distance of 70 centimeters. The new still rim is smaller than US 35 Summerlux FLE. I was getting a lens I thought I would only occasionally use. I was wrong. Been using it all the time since I bought it. After using the new still rim for a year in all kinds of conditions, sub down at F4, it's really good. This new classic Summerlux M35 1.4 appears to be sharp corner to corner. I say appears because I'm not a camera or lens reviewer. You're not going to catch me shooting dolls, color charge, blocks of crayons, plush doors, or brick walls just to check the sharpness and performance of a lens. That's a complete waste of time. You're just plain silly. I prefer being out here making photos than indoors, sitting behind a desk. I live and work in Paris. I bet if you were in my shoes, you would also be out here making photos and exploring the city instead of sitting behind the desk all day. I make photos for clients to animate my own social media communities and for the passions I have for photography or the subject I'm capturing. That's not something I can do sitting behind the desk. I seldom shoot wide open with a Leica M camera. The shutter speed is one one thousand of a second. Also, I'm not crazy about using ND filters for my photography because it can add extra vignetting or strange color cast to photos depending on the brand and strength of ND filters you use or the color film stuff you shoot with. I don't really do night photography either. For me, photography is all about the light. There isn't much light at night. Looking at the MTF charts, you can download from LeicaCamera.com. Close on at f2.8. The MTF charts for this new steel rim lens looks like my electrocardiogram when I'm doing a stress test. It's all over the place. Even at f5.6, the MTF charts looks like a roller coaster ride at Canada's Wonderland. It's not the sharpest lens Leica ever made, and that's exactly one of the reasons why I bought it. I wanted something different, plus it's smaller than most M lenses. If, as a photographer, you compose your photos placing your principal subjects in the corners and shoot mostly wide open, this isn't the lens for you. Who puts their principal subjects in corners of their photos is what I really want to know. And I really want to see those images. Maybe I'm missing something and I might learn something new. That's one of the things I really love about photography. There's no wrong way to do it. it there's almost as many approaches as, as there are photographers. Plus, there's always something new to learn. No one I know shoots landscape at f1.4 or f2. That shouldn't be a reason to think of it as a bad lens either. 
The new Leica still rim uses the same original design and optical formula as the one released in 1961. It adds some of its quality, namely its small size and lightweight, 205 grams. The original still rim is heavier at 222 grams. I weighted both lenses, they are different. I'm not that loopy needing to put camera gears on a scale for whatever reasons. I weighted them to see what the actual weight difference was because the original felt heavier in my hands. Some of you will surely point out that Leica and everyone else said the new lens is 200 grams, but that's incorrect. Leica only stated on the lens data sheet that it weights approximately 200 grams. Its actual weight is 205 grams. Close enough to 200, might as well round it up. One person mentioned the new cell room has a few internal parts made out of aluminum instead of brass. That could help explain the weight difference. Who knows? About the statement that the new cell room uses the same optical formula as the original cell room, it's a little like the statement that the new 35 Summerlock FLE version 2 from 2023 shares the same optical formula as the 35 Summerlock FLE version 1 from 2010. They may have the same optical formula, but they render differently. One version is not as good as the other. In the case of the FLE, the version it replaces, version 1, has better rendering than version 2, is the same with the steel rim. The new ratio is not as good as the original. There, there's rendering similarities between the new steel rim and the original lenses in the weird flares, in the bokeh, but they're not the same lenses at all. Plus, older lenses will have variations. They all seem pretty much unique to me. Each of the original steel rim I, I use and tested have a slightly different signature rendering, and I mean they all add a little something and unique to each individual lenses that you will not find even in other lenses of the same batch. Like the original, the new steel rim has a stainless steel rim at the front of the lens to hold the clip on all looks lens hood. That's where its moniker comes from. On the new steel rim, the new Olux lens hood seems to fall off more easily than the Olux lens hood does on the original steel rim. The lens has a fast f1.4 aperture and also has its issue, what I call quirks. Some people call them flaws. One meter minimum focusing distance limit, prone to flare when used wide open. At f1.4, images made with it can have a soft, dreamy look to them. And also, depending on the scene you're photographing, widely strange comb aberration and weirdly shaped highlights. When used wide open, you also notice peculiarities that could qualify as elation appearing in parts of the photos both at night and in daytime, plus highlight blooms in bright areas of the photos, just like with the original. I'll save you a Google search. Elation is defined as the spreading of light beyond its proper boundaries, such as backlight wrapping around a subject, like a bright warm mug in parts of the subject or elements in the foreground of your photos. These quirks and flaws are the kinds of stuff hipsters try to emulate in Lightroom to sell you even more presets. These days, they're not called flaws. You're supposed to call that character. It's a character lens. Actually, Dula flare and the new steel rim flares beautifully wide open. Also flares in different ways at f4 and f5.6. And it doesn't flare as much as I thought it would when shooting straight into the light. It's the same as with the original steel rim. When sunlight hits the front element at a certain angle, with the aperture closed down to f4 or f5.6, there's a couple of unique flares you can recognize as steel rim flares. Wide open also has quite a unique flare I haven't experienced with any other lenses. When the sun or stray light at night hits the front element just right, it renders a bold and unique reverse arc rainbow flare. It's kind of cool, but it's not everyone's like. It's a small lens, smaller than the current 28 Elmerit. I prefer shooting without a lens hood because I really don't like most lens of designs. I also seem to get better results when nothing gets in the way of the lens I'm using. Over time, I found that shooting with a naked lens makes photography more enjoyable. I don't mind the odd lens flare. There's no need to fiddle with any added protection breaking the mood. Plus, it makes me faster in getting the shot. And that's the same way I prefer it with my wife without any added protection. Uh, wait. And that, and that was today's uh, episode of TMI with Patrick. It takes some adjusting into how I hold my camera with it. I have large hands, and you know what they say about men's with large hands. It's easy for them to mindlessly put a finger in front of their lens. When using the new steel rim without the lens hood, from time to time, your finger may end up in the corner of your photos. Yes, I saw my finger in, in more photos than I care to admit and leave it at that. I know it's shameful to see a little flesh color uh, flare in the corner of your photos, but it's a character lens, and I guess that just had extra character. The new steel rim renders everything in a slightly cooler color profile on the blue side. It's different than the original. 
close on the photos look flatter with the new still rim and similar to the rendering of other modern retina lenses. This is why I say the new still rim is not so much a classic reissue, but more of a modern reinterpretation of the original using modern glass and coating. Gives you a more modern rendering when stopped down, keeping some of the uniqueness of the original when using wide open and up to F2. They said the new fall off is not as rapid compared to the original. The new lens is not as sharp. The color rendition is not as pleasing. Being a modern reinterpretation, Leica would have knocked it out of the ballpark with a close focusing set to 70 centimeters as opposed to one meter. This would have provided such a great creative tool in the guise of a small 35 Summilux. It would have been perfect, even better for me than the Apple 35. Even with its closer minimum focusing distance, because I find it easier to nail critical close focus with the rangefinder patch in the optical viewfinder, as opposed to focusing on a subject using the camera's live view or true of the Leica Visoflex, even when using the camera's focus peaking. I find the rangefinder to be more accurate. You can have your cake and eat it just without any icing. There's a reason the new steel rim costs a lot less than an original steel rim lens. It's an ice cake, but a bit on the dry side. Once you've made photos with an original steel rim, it leaves you wanting for more. In July of this year, I switched back to the Summicron version 4 lens as my primary lens for street photography for a couple of days. Same small size as the new steel rim, lighter weight, better rendering, and it has a 70 centimeter close focusing limit. Not that I focus this close making street photos, but it's nice to have one you want to make portraits without having to carry an extra lens. I quickly went back to the new steel rim because against the light, when shooting facing the sun, closed down at f4, f4.8 or f5.6, the new steel rim, just like the original, and those flare much better than the Leica Summitron version 4, and also better than the newer 35 Summilux FLE lenses both the previous version, the 2010 version, and the new 23 version of the new uh, Summilux FLE with close focusing. The Summilux FLE lenses are not bad, but they're not the best in eye contrast situation where there's usually fringing with modern lens design. The new still rim, just like the original, don't seem to have any fringing or chromatic aberration when used against the light. That's great because I love shooting against the light with my camera facing the sun either directly into the sun or with some sunlight hitting the lens at an angle for two reasons. One, it's more challenging. And two, it's like shooting in the rain. Fewer people do it. The new still rim has a lot of character. There are different types of flares with it, depending on how the light hits the front element and your aperture setting. The new still rim renders in its own manner, close enough to the original, which is great when using it on a digital M camera. As much as I love using the Apple 35 when shooting into the light because it's highly corrected, facing the sun, the Apple 35 has no fringing or chromatic aberrations. I do prefer the odd flare, highlights, and rendition of the new still rim when making photos against the light. Leica got this right in 1960 when it was first made and announced. This hasn't changed with the new still rim. Time for cake. A very welcome change from the original with the new still rim reissue. You can now use a 46 millimeter threaded lens filter on the new 2022 still rim. That's the same filter size as with the current and modern 50 Summilux and the newer 35 Summilux FLE. Good job, Leica. I'm being sarcastic here. I would have preferred a 41 millimeter filter size. The new still rim also comes with a new click on Olux lens hood, just like the original. Plus, and knee 46 screw on lens hood. The new steel rim comes through with not one, but two different lens hood. Great, right? Because unlike the original steel rim, you cannot use a lens filter and the included Olux lens hood at the same time. It just doesn't work. The new Olux lens hood cannot be fitted on the new steel rim once you put a knee 46 lens filter on it. Not so great anymore, is it? It's, can I say it, very disappointing because you can use a lens filter and the Olux lens hood at the same time on the original steel rim lenses. And this is why Leica includes an extra screw-on lens hood with the new steel rim to be able to use a lens filter with the lens hood at the same time. You're probably thinking, oh, but that's generous on Leica's part. Well, about that extra 46 screw-on lens hood, 
using it with a lens filter at the same time, it's a poison gift. You first need to put the lens filter on the lens, then add the screw on lens hood on the lens filter, stacking lens hood and lens filter. Yeah, not so great. And not because it doesn't look good, it looks terrible, but because lens filter and lens hood stacking introduces our dignity in the corners of your photos. That's bad. Yeah, let's be totally clear. This combination of extra screw on lens hood and lens filter that first came with the new steel rim stacked on the lens filter on the new steel rim adds what Leica calls undesirable dignity. Leica admitted this was not up to their standard. Then how did it pass their quality assurance? And why was it included with the new lens? Our dignity is not something you can remove with a simple uh, vignette slider in post-process. That leads me to ask, why couldn't they just design a new Olex lens hood that worked with the lens filter in the first place, like the original did back in the 60s with an E41 lens hood? Would that have been so difficult to do? That is the question. I bet ChatGTP would probably come up with a design solution to make it work, but what do I know? Any, anyway, you know what's also terrible? The included screw on lens hood that comes with the new steel rim lens looks like a cheap aftermarket no name part you can buy online for about eight euros delivered to your home. That's bad design and sloppy work. Leica could have made a much better screw on lens hood for the price they sell this lens for and for how much money they're asking for it when sold separately. I don't know, maybe a screw on lens hood in which you can screw in a knee 49 filter inside of it instead of stacking a screw on lens hood on the lens filter. The screw in lens hood that, a screw in lens hood that wouldn't introduce or do anything to the photos. I'm both bemused and disappointed. Not only does the initial included screw on lens hood looks bad, it doesn't work correctly. By trying to solve an issue, Leica literally introduced a new one, art vignetting introduced in the corners of your photos. You could say that just adds extra character. After all, it's a character lens, sold separately. Leica is asking 225 euros for this new E46 screw in lens hood. You know what they say, a fool and their money are soon parted. I should probably sell mine online for 175 euros. I'm never going to use it. Leica worked on a solution, designed a new screw on lens hood to replace the faulty one. In mid-October, I emailed Leica asking for a replacement. I picked it up at the Leica service center in Paris on October 31st. The only time I used the original screw on lens hood was to test it versus the new screw on lens hood to see if Leica had resolved the art vignetting issue. They did. Wide open at f1.4, the new steel rim without a lens hood or lens filter has normal lens vignetting but at f5.6, there's no vignetting. Some new steel rim owners complain about art vignetting being added with just a lens filter. I did not experience this. I didn't notice any added vignetting when using with a chrome or black rim E46 Leica lens filter on the new steel rim. With just the first defective screw on lens hood, without a lens filter, there's no added vignetting, but when stacking the original screw on lens hood on a lens filter on the new steel rim, at, at f1.4, the vignetting is more pronounced, and there's art vignetting at f5.6. The newer screw on lens hood, with or without a lens filter, doesn't add any vignetting to the images, but still look as bad. It looks like crap as the previous screw on lens hood. It looks terrible. The Olex lens hood does not introduce art or added vignetting to the photos. There's partial viewfinder blockage with the Olex lens hood, nothing major. With the screw on lens hood, there isn't much added viewfinder blockage with and without lens filter. The ventilated part on both the original and the new screw on lens hood I have fall right in front of viewfinder. I seldom look to the viewfinder for most of the photos I make with a 35mm lens, except when composing cityscape photos or for critical focus when making portraits. I only really use a lens hood when it rains to prevent raindrops getting on the front element. The lens itself without a lens hood or with just a lens filter does not cause any viewfinder blockage. These days I'm only shoot from the hip using the distance scale on the lens to range focus my photos. I don't look through the viewfinder very often so viewfinder blockage is not a real issue for me. The Olux lens hood looks okay plus it's not ventilated. It's useful when shooting in the rain as a lens umbrella to help prevent raindrops hitting the front element and ruining my photos. I love making photos in the rain. I shoot when it rains, grass does not rust. The Olux lens hood is totally useless for me, rain or shine. 
with the new still rim because I always use a yellow filter when shooting black and white photos. You cannot use a lens filter and the looks lens hood at the same time. It doesn't work. Yeah, the little things you find out after spending your money on a new lens. It's all right. I prefer shooting without a lens hood anyways. A few years ago, I bought a silver chrome aftermarket E46 screw on lens hood from Torsten Overgaard, that Swedish photographer. It's large, but in that lens hood, I can screw in a 52 millimeter yellow filter. I'll keep that chrome aftermarket lens hood in my camera bag for rainy days. At any aperture, this aftermarket lens hood does not introduce any art or added dignity. Nothing shows in the corners of the photos with the lens filter screwed in. Bob is my uncle. For no reasons, I asked my wife which lens hood she prefers. She said the aftermarket silver chrome lens would look better because it matched the silver chrome finish of both the lens and the camera. Or I might argue, my wife knows everything. I call her Wikipedia. No, not really. I call her Alcopedia because she once broke a stoker stroller in half trying to unfold it. Not only is she always right, she's strong. I never argue with her. The new steel ring comes with a plastic push-on lens cap, the kind I usually end up losing quickly because when they fall, they don't make any noise. The included push-on lens cap does not even fit on a Lake RE46 lens filter. Come on, yeah. This is fast turning into a comedy of errors. It's not even funny. I had to go back to the Laker store to get an extra E46 pinch cap for my lens. I had to buy an extra lens cap for a brand new lens I just purchased minutes before. It's not cool. I would have loved to have a pinch cap included because once you put a filter on the lens, you cannot use the included push-on lens cap. It just doesn't fit. The circumference of the Leica E46 lens filter is smaller than the circumference of the stainless steel rim in front of the lens. That's also bad design. Once more, I'm disappointed. The worst part is I already have a few of those E46 pinch caps, but I like all my lenses, like my cameras, to be individually complete and independent on their own. With that extra pinch cap, the lens felt complete, but I had to pay extra for it. This past year, I used the new steel rim extensively on digital lens bodies, mostly with an M10R. I've yet to lose the plastic push-on lens cap, and that time I lost a pinch cap and two back lens cap go figure. The new classic edition steel rim is six bit coated, modern digital M camera, namely the M10R, M10 monochrome and M11 models. We recognize it as a 35 summer lux lens. For the M10, you will need the latest firmware update, otherwise it won't recognize the lens you're using. The original steel rim is encoded. When using an original steel rim lens on a digital camera, you'll need to manually set the type of lens in the camera menu for lens profile to be applied to the digital files. But on a film camera, it doesn't matter. The one time I used the Visoflex Type 20 on an M10D with the new steel rim, the image preview in the Visoflex I play slightly up at f1.4. My simple fix was to close on the lens to f4, making sure the Visoflex diopter was correctly adjusted to my eye. It was. To be clear, even when the diopter is, a, is adjusted to your eyes, the image preview in the Visoflex can look somewhat soft and slightly off. Just know not to adjust the Visoflex diopter with this lens wide open. I thought I'd mention that so you don't think there's something wrong with either your eye, the Visoflex on the lens, for no reasons. I don't know why people buy a rangefinder camera to use a Visoflex on it. That defeats the purpose of adding a rangefinder. It's great that the new steel rim comes with a little lens pouch. I can keep the lens in it when it is in my camera bag and travel light. On the plus side, my silver chrome 50 Summerlux aspherical fits perfectly in it. My 50mm lens will continue spending time in the lens pouch because the new steel rim is staying on my camera. When I go out shooting these days, I just bring the 35, no longer the 50. One camera, one lens. Leica, instead of selling that E46 screw on lens hood separately, please sell that cute little lens pouch included with the new steel rim. It will be way more useful for way more people carrying an extra Leica lens or two in their camera bag. It takes less space than the cumbersome leather cases included with all modern M lenses and still protects the lens. I'd buy a couple more of those, but not at 225 euros a piece. Come on, planting seeds, just planting seeds. I purchased the new steel rim to have a wider focal length as a complement to a 50 millimeter lens. I haven't really used the 50 since I bought it. At the opening of this video, when I said this new steel rim isn't worth the money, in my opinion, for most people, it's still not worth the money. That will never change. 
I can say the same about all modern and digital and analog cameras. I'm not talking about the cost of purchase. They're not worth it for most people because of the lack of features at this price point. That's also debatable because I do love the M system specifically for its lack of features, for its simplicity and durability. But for this kind of money, for most people, there are a lot of other and better options. I say this because just as an example, most people using M cameras will only buy one 35 mil lens in their lifetime, not two, certainly not four, different ones at the same time. No one really needs more than one 35 millimeter lens. This new still rim fills a want more than needs requirement for me. I imagine I'm not that different from most people. I can sum up my experience with the new still rim by saying the more I use it, the more I like it. It's also a silver chrome lens that looks good on the silver chrome camera. I do prefer the looks of it on a silver chrome camera. Plus where it really shines is using it to shoot black and white and color film. It's also great fun on a digital M camera. This is why I used it almost exclusively for a year. It's using a small lens made my photography more enjoyable. It was worth the price for me because of this purchase I discovered how good the original steel rim lenses truly really are. This past winter, I was putting the new steel rim on a Leica m 10 d That digital M without the back screen made to look like an analog camera. I was putting the camera in my winter jacket pocket. If you have big and deep pockets, that's a great and fun pocketable combo, just saying. If you're looking for a complimentary fast lens to a 50 Summerlux, the new Silverman could be a good addition. But if you're anything like me, the new 35 Silverman might change what you consider to be your primary lens. Your 50 might turn into your secondary lens of choice. Also think about the fact I only use my Apple 35 six times since I purchased the new Silverman. And I consider my Apple 35 to be my desert island lens. Go figure. The new steel rim can appear soft at f1.4. At f2, the corners are still not perfect. That doesn't matter to me. In my composition, I never have anything critical in the corners of my photos. On the digital cameras, I consider this new lens sweet spot to be f1.7 for portraits, where it's sharp enough in the centers and still unique in the corners. And for street photography, its sweet spot for me is anything from f4 to f5.6. I use it way more at f4 and f5.6 than I use it at f1.7. By a four, it looks good from corner to corner. But then again, I didn't pick so peep any of my photos. Using a rangefinder, distance scale, when shooting from the hip with a 35 mil lens, I'm good at two distances, six feet, about a meter 80, and also at four meters. That's roughly 13 feet away from me. I've seldom shot with the new cell room wide open at f1.4 when shooting street. When I needed more speed, I'd open it up to f1.7 where it remained sharp enough in the center with a unique rendering while keeping my principal subject in sharp enough focus. I already have other sharp M35 M lenses. Getting this one last year added something different to my kit and I prefer the look of a silver chrome lens on a silver chrome camera. That's just how I am. Also appreciate how small the Leica M lenses are. The smaller the better. This new still M35 is the smallest current 35 in the M system right now. I also prefer lenses that gives photos a unique look. Wide open this lens deliver. At f1.4, it's like no other lenses I own. And when your subject is close enough to the lens, even wide open can be sharp and the background is delicious. I'll say it again for clarity. When subjects are further away from you, use at f1.4, the resulting photos with the new cell rim will be softer than they would with other M modern lenses at f1.4, same as with the original. You get that vintage Leica glow and also at times bloomed highlights, which does not help with sharpness. The rendering can be soft, but that's okay with me. I don't often shoot wide open. But for portraits, when your subject is a meter away, wide open is really good and the background is truly delicious. With post-process these days, if you find it lacking, you can increase sharpness, structure, clarity, color saturation and contrast to any photos, even with analog photos, and I mean the scans. Once scan, analog photos become digital files you can touch up in Lightroom, Capture One, Photoshop. Yes, I almost always slightly tweak my analog photos. On a side note, the DA slider does wonders to reduce highlight blues, just saying. I'll get in the weeds from here on in. Okay, I just pretend I wasn't already in the weeds up to my nose and see how that works as a lens review format. A little bit like Memento by Christopher Nolan. I started at the end and I'll roll back to the beginning of the story to see how I arrive at that conclusion. Fitting as I started this video at the inception written in Paris, 
I'll wrap it up with a message that can hopefully help improve your photography and allow you to grow as a photographer. Last October, on October 20th, 2022, Leica announced a new film camera and a new classic lens reissue. To this day, people seem to be mainly only talking about the new M6. It's interesting, but for me, the new M6 was a non-event. Leica always made film cameras. They never stopped. Before this new M6, they still made and still make a Leica MP and a Leica MA. The MA is an MP without a light meter and strangely a slightly brighter viewfinder because it doesn't have that little silver reflective band you see in the viewfinder of Leica M cameras with in-camera meters. That lets in a little bit more light, making the Leica MA viewfinder brighter. And I was told by two different people working at Leica on two separate occasions before it was even announced that the new M6 is an MP using an M7 top plate with a six engraving. Makes sense. It has the same shutter speed dial as the Leica MP. It's not an M6 DTL. That would have been something cool and different, but it sure feels like a Leica MP in disguise. It's cool. And adding a new M6 to the mix provides one more analog M camera to choose from. Now there are three slightly different new inbox MP camera models you can buy from Leica. The new M6 is not that exciting for me because honestly, when I use an M6 for a short period of time, I was dreaming of having a Leica MP. Now that I have two analog MP cameras, a black paint one and a silver chrome one, it doesn't make any sense for me to want a new M6. But when it comes to cameras and lenses, my wife would probably tell you I don't have any common sense. Has no common sense. And she's absolutely right. On the same day, Leica announced a new lens, a classic ratio of the famed Stillman 35 Sumlux, first announced in 1960. I already knew this new lens was coming, and I kind of sort of pre-ordered it in advance before it was even officially announced. It still grabbed my attention that they Leica announced it for two reasons. First, I knew I'd probably be getting it soon. Second, I finally had all the details about it. Leica calls it the classic Sumlux M35 1.4. That's a mouthful. For short, I just call it the new steel rim. Fame, partly because for good original steel rim, you're looking at spending anything from 14 to 25,000 euros. There are a few reasons original steel rim lenses come in such high price. Let's get into it. In 1961, it was the fastest wide angle lens available. A wide 35 millimeter lens that opened at f1.4 came in handy in the, back in the analog film days when you couldn't increase your eyes so willy-nilly like you can with today's digital cameras. Having a faster lenses was pretty much the only game in town. Let me give you additional information. Few people seem to know about original Leica steel rim lenses, explaining why it's such a well-regarded lens. This information represents hours of research and testing by and conversations by serious Leica collectors, the people who buy and set the prices for these vintage original lenses. Leica collectors do not only collect for the sake of collecting, they also use the cameras and lenses they buy. They acquire those lenses because they want a very specific look and rendering you can only get with certain vintage lenses. Most people seem to think all original steel rim lenses are equal, but some original steel rim lenses are more equal than others. Steven, a fantastic photographer based in Paris and a serious collector, schooled me on the original steel rim. At the time, he owned eight or 10 original Leica steel rim lenses, plus a couple of new Leica steel rim 35, one of which he had painted black to match one of his original M3 black paint cameras. He has since sold both those original new steel rim lenses. He didn't like the rendering of those new steel rim lenses. The original steel rim was announced in 1960 and sold from 1961 until 1966. Most people say only 1,500 lenses were ever made. They are wrong. I did some research because can anyone really trust information found on the internet these days, even from trusted sources, when everyone seems to simply repeat what others have already said without fact-checking or doing a little bit of research on their own first. I'm not an expert, but four respected sources, three you can easily find online and one in print, the ninth edition of the Leica Pocket Book by Red Dot Photo Books. That's one of the Leica reference books that people who work at Leica uses. That alone should tell you something. All these sources confirm that 7,500 original silver lenses were made by Leica between 1961 and 1966. One of these sources 
as a number closer to 8,000 original Silvium lenses actually made. I have no clue how many of these original lenses remain in the world either. No one does. The original Silvium was made in five batches. The first batch made in 1960, serial number starting with 173, known as the 173, was and remains the worst performer. Some people even say that first batch is horrible to absolutely avoid. Never buy a 173. Based on the assigned serial number, 1,100 of these were made. The 173 was only made in chrome. Between 1961 and 1964, two new lens batch were made, the 176 and 177. These are the three first number on the seven digit serial number for these lenses. The first three numbers is how you can identify the difference lens batch. The 176 and 177 are identical, they're both good. Whatever issue the first batch had were more or less fixed before making these two batches. They are the most common original silver lenses you will find these days. Makes sense since Leica assigned a total of 4200 serial number for these two lens batch. Some of the original silver lenses were made with goggles for Leica M3 cameras, which don't have 35 millimeter frame lines in the viewfinder. These goggle lenses focus closer than one meter. Minimum focusing distance for these is 65 centimeters. Lake also made some original black steel rim lenses. These are really hard to find and very expensive. They were only made in the second and third batch, the 176 and 177 series. They made two more batch after. The 206 made between 1964 and 1966. The 206 is good. There are not a lot of 206 coming up for sale these days. Based on the serial number assigned to this batch, 1,206 lenses were made. 1966, the last batch was made, the 216. The 216 is truly uncommon. People who have these tend to hold on to them. They are harder to find. It's the most expensive and valuable original steel rim. Leica assigned 1,200 serial number for this last batch. What Leica changed on the 216 last batch, and few people seem to know, is the coating. Collectors call the last batch the golden coating. Under 216, the coating is less purple, it's more warm, almost golden. That's the best version of the steel rim because this updated coating gives photos warmer tones and better contrast. It's also sharper, providing a much better rendering. The 216 is by far the best original steel rim version made right before it was replaced with version 2 because it's the most rare and expensive and almost impossible to find version of the original steel rim fewer people have used it. In 1967, Leica released the Summerlux 35 version 2 with a slight redesign and without the stainless steel front rim. The version 2 was redesigned for a new lens hood, which holds more securely than the clip-on Olux lens hood of the original steel rim. On the 35 Summerlux version 2, you cannot use a screw and filter like you can on the original steel rim. The front of the lens barrel is not threaded for one. The new lens hood for the version 2 Summerlux 35 part number 12504. It holds an easier to find lens filter inside of it. This new lens hood can be unscrewed, it separates in two parts to drop in a series seven lens filter inside of it. There are also some very good and valuable version 2 Summerlux M32 1.4. Part of three version two lens batch, all with infinity lock. The 216 version two, known as the transition batch, Using the leftover glass from the previous version 216, it's the one with Infinity Lock. Somewhat consider an improved steel rim 216, using the same glass as the last batch steel rim with an even better lens coating than the other 222 and 234 version 2 batch with Infinity Lock. As more time passes the, and the serial number Summerlux version 2 increases, the less good the newer lenses tend to be. Of the three version 2, batches I just mentioned, only the 216 version 2 uses the same glass as the 216 steel rim. It also has a brass and painty lock, and it has a newer and better lens coating, making it even sharper than the last batch golden coating 216 steel rim lenses. It's the best version of all the Summerlux 35 version 2 lenses. People will use it, say it has a better rendering than the 216 golden coating steel rim lenses. The difference is not huge but the few who often use both the steel rim gold coating and the 216 transition batch 
with the brass and pinky lock can easily notice its unique signature rendering by looking at photos made with it. But it's not a still one. The version 2 lens went on to be produced for nearly 30 years with the same optical formula as the still rim. The glass shape and layout remain the same. Some of the chemical elements in the composition of the glass and the lens coating were updated a few times in those 30 years. You don't get the same rendering with version 2 lenses as you did with the original still rim. It replaces. The version 2 lens design was replaced with the current Sunlux M35 1.4 in 1995, but could still be purchased new for about four years after they stopped production. I'm also saying this for two separate reasons. First, this type of Summerlux M35 1.4 classic lens was made for about 35 years in one version or another. You can save yourself a whole lot of money buying a later version of this lens on the second hand market at a four. Photos made with any of them will more or less look the same. But at F8, only the original still rim and the 216 version 2 transition batch with the same 216 uh, still rim glass keeps that 3D dimensionality and better color rendering. That little extra wow factor plus better sharpness than later version of the Summerlux version 2 lenses. Those are the reasons the original still rim and the first version 2 uh, Summerlux 35 1.4 lenses are more valuable, they are better lenses. And second, it was so well designed initially, the product run lasted 35 years. It was groundbreaking design in the early 60s and remained groundbreaking until the early to mid 90s. In my opinion, it still remains groundbreaking to this day because it is so small. It's a really tiny full frame 35 millimeter f1.4 full frame lens because of its small size it's a true pleasure to use it's really growing on me it's far from perfect and this means that it makes my photography more enjoyable forces me to think before pressing the shutter its limitation and imperfection pushes me to make better photos thanks to steven i'm privileged and grateful to have had three different still rim lenses to test the last batch 216 the best original still rim version plus a 177 close focusing also tested a 176 I was looking at buying from someone else. Of all the original still rim I tried, including a transition batch 216 version 2 Summerlux 35, the close focusing 177 ended up being my favorite original still rim lens. I made photos with these original lenses to compare them with its modern reissue. Lenses made in the 1960s versus a new 2022 still rim Summerlux. The first time I met Steven, I casually mentioned I was working on a review video about the new still rim. He offered to lend me an original still rim lens, stating the obvious. Most Leica people would be way more interested in a comparison between the original and the new lens. That's 100% right on the money. It rapidly went downhill from there. A simple idea for a short 15 to 20 minute video I would churn out in about a month. Turned out into a more than 90 minute video production that I worked on for about a year. Anyways, ergonomically, the original 216 still rim feels better in use. The focus ring has the same resistance from infinity to close focus, not so with the new still rim. The ratio has slightly more resistance towards the infinity side, and the focus ring seems a bit looser on the minimum focusing end of its manual focus travel. Yeah, the focus action is stiffer in approaching infinity with the new lens, plus when it, it's either the infinity or minimum focusing distance wall. The ratio sounds cheap versus an original lens. The new steel rim sounds hollow. It must be the aluminum inside. Compared to an original steel rim from 1966, the aperture ring on the new lens sounds and feels cheap. There seems to be more play with it. A few people who purchased the new steel rim called it a wobble. It doesn't wobble on its own, so it's not a wobble. Come on, people. There seems to be more play with it when you grab the aperture tab with your fingers to move it or to jiggle it side to side. And that's pretty much the same with any other modern Leica M lenses aperture ring. There's always been some play in the aperture ring of modern M lenses. I'm not going to lose sleep over it, but still, at this price point, it's not optimal. A person who works at Leica told me he was surprised at how cheaply built the new steel rim seemed to him. And he also said some of his co-workers shared the same opinion. The aperture ring is much more satisfying to use on the original version. It has less play, it's quieter, it definitely has tighter tolerances, it feels more firm and secure. Original lenses are about 17 grams heavier than the new steel rim. They truly feel solid. 
with tighter tolerances and handle with precision. Then again, I'm comparing 60-year-old lenses versus a new lens released about a year ago. After using and handling four original steel rim lenses, the new steel rim doesn't feel as solidly built. The new classic Summilox M35 1.4 remains a good Leica lens. It's well built. Just keep in mind, cameras and lenses built in the 60s tended to be over-engineered. Of course, I'm comparing lenses from the 1960s versus a lens made in 2022. The older lenses felt heavier and more solid than the new one. Things were made to last back in the days. Look at me, I'm a child of the 60s. I'm more solidly built than millennial. Cosmetically, there are differences. The first thing I noticed, the metric and imperial distance scale measure on the lens focus ring are inverted. On the original, the feet distance indicator is closer towards the camera and it's the opposite on the new still rim, where the meter's focus distance indicator is closer to the camera. When you look at what range your focus is set at on the new version, the meter's focus distance scale is right next to the upper focal distance scale. This is where my eyes and imagineers as well naturally look when setting or checking your focus distance to the numbers closer to you, closer to the hyperfocal distance scale, yeah. That's a plus for the original version because metric still feels foreign to me as a unit of measure. I can easily visualize where 15 feet away from me is, not so much where five meters away from me is. I first have to do a quick mental calculation converting meters to feet, and often that's the difference between getting and missing a shot. Saying this out loud to make me sound like I'm a few slices short of a full pie because there's both feet and a meter's focus distance scale on the lens, but I still do the math in my head. Doing a quick conversion calculation, yes, the elevator does not always reach the top floors, and that would make such a great tell me you're an idiot without telling me you're an idiot meme. I'm Canadian. I grew up with the Imperial system. In Canada, we started using the Imperial system in new construction in the mid to late 80s. I was born in the 60s. As a footnote, all the original steel rim lenses were made in Canada. The font is easier to read on the original version. One of the original steel rim lenses I used had a thicker, rounder, and slightly fatter font. The engraving on the lens barrel also appeared to be deeper on the original lenses. I'm not a fan of the modern, thinner, squarish font on newer Leica lenses. On the original lens, the knurling providing purchase for your finger where you grip the lens is at the very edge of the camera, right at the base of the lens barrel, making original steel rim lenses look smaller. It also makes them look much better, but the lens are about the same size. Play size by size, they're just a small, they have the same height, same size. Ergonomically, the knurling at the base of the new classic Summerlock M35 1.4 can be considered better by some. It seems more practical, providing a more secure grip from, for your finger since it's elevated from the edge of the camera body. Is this a win for the new steel rim? At the price of those things, you definitely don't want to fumble and rub those lens because you can get a solid grip on it. But I never had any handling issues with original steel rim lenses when swapping them on different cameras. So it's no, it's not a win. Why couldn't Leica just keep the exact same lens barrel designs? Is it, is it? Lens. I don't know. I the new ratio looks lens so it does not fit on original lenses. A couple of people mentioned it did. It doesn't. It's slightly bigger than the lens hood of the original steel rim. This, the stainless steel rim on the new lens is wider to accommodate the Mi 46 lens filter. The original lens used an E41 filter, it's not the same lens. The stainless steel rim on the original lens is smaller, making the new Olex lens sit on the aperture ring, on the aperture tab of the original lens. In the right light, the coating on the new steel rim looks reddish purple and can look transparent. On the original lenses, specifically on the 216 lens batch, the lens coating has a golden cast. That's why collector called the 216 the golden coating. Thanks to this coating, the 216 has a warmer, more contrasting rendering and sharper. It provides a more distinct separation of the subject to the background, a more rapid fall off, accentuating that 3D pop effect on still photos. That wow factor is really wow. All capital letters on photos made with an original lens. On film, the original keeps a 3D dimensionality, even at F8, there's more depth, because the color rendition is much better when closed down. To F8, it's impressive. Both the new steel rim and the original steel rim lenses have the same number of aperture blade, 10. 
with the same aperture blade shape. The Infinity Focus Lock Release button is definitely better looking and more visible on the original steel rim, yet I kind of like the Infinity Focus Lock Release button design on the new steel rim. It appears fully integrated. If you don't know it's there, you just don't see it. It works great and it's just as easy to use as it is on the originals. It's seamless, good design. However, again, why couldn't Leica keep the Infinity Release Lock design of the original lens? It was perfect and looked better. Now, had they made a black chrome version of the new steel rim with a painted brass Infinity Lock, it would have been absolutely epic and a wing to the 216 version 2 transition batch, the 216, that very first 35 Summer Logs version 2 batch made with leftover of the original steel rim, plus one stupid, that cheap, ugly looking screw on lens hood on the new steel rim, the lens looks more like a 35 Summer Logs version 2 than a new steel rim. All I'm saying is having a black paint brass release button on the new steel rim would have been fitting. At a glance, the original and the new lens look about the same. Price-wise, an original last batch Leica steel rim Summer Logs 35 will cost you about four to eight times more than the new classic Summer Logs 35. M1.4 due to its extraordinary rendering, build quality, and mostly its scarcity, supply, and demand. I like the new reissue steel rim 35. It's a good lens. I do prefer the rendering, design, and build quality of the original version. The original steel rim is a better lens, especially on film. I should know. I shot about 40 rolls of film using original and new steel rim lenses between December of last year and June of this year. If you ever have a chance to test an original steel rim, specifically a 216 last batch golden coating lens, just use film. If you have an analog M camera, don't waste any time using an original last batch on a digital M. Trust me on this one, you'll thank me. The last batch original steel rim is really good and unique with a digital M, but it's really fantastic on film. It's the best lens I've ever used to shoot 35mm film using both Kodak 3X and Portra 400 and I've been making photos since 1978. Now, that really says something. It says I'm looking for an original 216 steel rim of my own to add to my kit. The original last batch is really that good. So good, in fact, I'm willing to spend 15 to 25,000 euros for the right one. An optically perfect 176 came up for sale recently, but it was about three to 4,000 euros overpriced. At this price level, I'd rather spend a few more thousand to get a 216 the last batch lens with a better lens coating, I'm still looking for the right lens. On photos made with any of the original steel rim I tested, on film the colors seem richer, more vibrant. Plus when using both modern analog M and digital M cameras with any of these original steel rim lenses, the cameras seem to meter better with these original lenses and more accurately than they do with the new steel rim ratio. I'm not making this up, there is a difference. Photos made with the new steel rim reissue using the same exact ISO and aperture setting I use with an original lens appears slightly brighter by about a third of a stop. The colors are not as saturated or contrasty as they are with an original lens. I use four different original steel rim lenses. I had the same result with four different cameras. Could it be due to the type of glass or coating used on the original lenses? Perhaps. The cameras seem to meter more accurately with original steel rim lenses, period. The original 216 steel rim, the golden coating, is sharper wide open and closed down. The colors are better and the rendering is super. And for me, it's all about the rendering. It's the feeling you get when looking at the photos, that wow factor. Then again, I looked at all the photos, all the film photos in print, and also on a 27 inch monitor. Please print your photos. You will change how you approach and see your photography. I made a few photos at f1.4 with this new lens to see how it performs wide open in a variety of settings and to shut the naysayers up. When the new steel rim was first released, I noticed a few people online who seemed to denigrate the performance of the Leica steel rim lenses, both the original and the new reissue. Them naysayers were mostly on a French online Leica form. I don't think they've used it correctly or had a chance to use this new version or even the original version. Maybe they tried a more recent version 2 lens which doesn't use the same glass and coating as the original steel rim or even God forbid a 173 first batch steel rim, that horrible version you want to avoid at all costs. I know, let the vilifications begin in the comments below. Have a go at it. Leica fans add the antics to their monikers. Some are true fanatics. 
they are. But we don't call them fanatics anymore, we call them passionate. Please just try to keep it civil in the comments below. I found out about the naysayers when I started doing research last year about the new Leica Silwin and the original lens preparing for this video. And also in responses on a post I made on a French online Leica forum last October, fully knowing in advance how people were going to respond on that particular forum. I simply talked about my experience with the new Silwin I'd recently purchased and shared samples, photos I made with it on that uh, Leica forum. My apologies, I can be a bit of a troll at times. People were saying the focus is too soft, the rendering is not contrasty enough, and pointing out a few other flaws regarding the new and original Silvin plus version 2 Summerlock 35 lenses. But then again, there's a saying over here, j'aime rien, je suis parisien. I don't like anything, I'm Parisian. It could be a French thing, being contrarian for the sake of being contrarian, just to keep the conversation going and the wine flowing. Who knows? The new Stellium is definitely not the sharpest lens wide open. No one claimed it was, and it's not an Apple 35 either. It isn't even close to a 35 Summicron at f2, like some people who work at Leica mentioned it was supposed to be, but seem to get there by f4. If you seldom make photo f1.4, you can get similar result with a 35 Summilogs version 2 lens for less money. The new Stellium provides a unique look when used wide open and remains unique at f2, where the corners are still a tad soft. When used on a digital M camera for street photography, I consider its sweet spot to be at about f4, just like with the original. On color film, the original steel rim sweet spot is f8, for it provides even better contrast and better colors, while retaining a 3D dimensionality like rendering. The new steel rim is more modern, as a flatter rendering closed down. For a fraction of the cost, at a glance, the new steel rim looks like the original, and those flare like the original renders pretty much as close to an original as can be, but it's not as good as the original. There are differences. You definitely won't mind those differences for the price you pay for it, compared to the price you'd have to pay for an original. You will think it's a good compromise until you actually compare it to an original steel rim. Then it will leave you wanting for more. Look, even once I find and purchase an original steel rim I like, I'll surely be keeping my new steel rim, not because it's a real pleasure to use to make photos with, no. I'll just keep it because I really don't like the process of selling my camera gear online. It's a hassle I don't like to deal with. Once I have an original steel rim lens, I will probably never use the new steel rim ratio again, ever. Why would I use a lens with a lesser rendering when I have a better one? Would you? I imagine you're not that different from me. Once you have a better lens, the old one just ends up gathering dust. That's the way it is. As a complementary lens, the new 35 cell rim can be a choice. As a one lens solution, no, it's probably not a good idea because there are a lot of other and better 35 millimeter M lenses out there, both modern and older versions, new or used lenses from Leica and other brands. You have your pick of the litter. You choose what's best for you and your budget. On the one end, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a fan of the new steel rim. Also came across a lot of other new steel rim fans, owners online. There seem to be way more fans of the new steel rim than naysayers at this time. The new steel rim is not a bad lens. I like it because it's great when shooting street photos against the light. It's a fun lens with a few shortcomings and flaws. And this makes my photography more enjoyable because it forces me to quickly pause and think before pressing the shutter, if only to convert meters into feet. On the other end, a few people in the Leica community have realized the new steel rim is not what it could have been. It is not as good as the three previous classic ratio versus the original counterpart. With the three previous Leica classic lens ratio, the rendering of the lenses is not that different compared to the original vintage version of these classic lenses. The new Summer on 28 has even a better rendering than the original. When buying one of these other three classic ratio, the 10 bar 90, the summer on 28, and the 15 Octilux classic ratio, you're not going to shell out much more for vintage original of the same lens. Not so with the new cell rim. The rendering is different enough. It's not as good. It's flatter. It's way more modern. I like blooms are more pronounced when used wide open. The color rendition is not as pleasing, and the lens barrel design of the new cell rim is different. The looks and ergonomics are not as good as they are in the original. 
the new steel rim seems more like a reaction to me than a reissue. You need to know this before buying it. That's as deep as I really want to go regarding this new lens. Otherwise, we just drown in technical and irrelevant nitpicky detail. Or did I already just do that? Hmm. Any. This lens review is not about the lens. It never was about the lens. The reason I'm making this video is really about why you shouldn't buy it. Let's get on done. For me, perfect technique, I make a pixel and sharp lenses is not what good photography is all about. And this finally brings me to why I made this video in the first place, to talk about something completely different. There's a real problem keeping us where we're at versus where we could be creatively. We've been sold a bag of goods, sharp tools, which do not improve our photography one bit. I want to spread a message, or at least give you food for thoughts, just planting seeds. In my opinion, the real issue we face, from what I've seen and read online these past few years, a lot of people seem to equate good photography with iMegapixel and sharpness. Maybe this new Leica still rim is the cure for that need for sharpness. For these people, a good photo has to be technically perfect, otherwise the photo is of little value. I'll even go as far as to say, for some, when a photo is made with the latest, most expensive camera gear, it's even better. And this is a real problem. Shifting the focus on our collective shortcomings to the wrong place, the gear. Yes, for these folks, the equipment used to take set photos and the technical aspect of the photo is way more important than subject matter the light and the composition. I'm not making this up. Not that my photos are great by any stretch of the imagination or better than yours. I'm just stating what I've noticed on camera equipment review site, discussion forums, social media, and YouTube these past few years. The problem is also some of these fine folks would like a 1960 lens reissue to be as sharp in the corners when used at f1.4, just like an Apple 35 Cinecron, but for half the price. They also wish for a new Leica M6 camera to be sold for about $2,500 or half the price of a new Leica MP. When this new M6 clearly seems to be a Leica MP made to look like an M6, same viewfinder as an MP, same meter, different film winder and film advanced lever, plus different finish and engraving with a few other minor refinements, but otherwise the same as a Leica MP. Walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, shoots like a duck. Uh, it's a duck. You knew you're getting the best of the best Leica makes. I'm not sorry, it comes at a price. The same logic can be applied to all new gear from any brand, make or model recently released. For a lot of people, it's never good enough. There's always a little something not quite right and it's always cost too much. Simply pointing out, no matter how incredible a new camera or new lens is from any brand, for a lot of people out there, it never seems to be good enough. Yet photos made with the latest and greatest gear they just complain about for still not being perfect or more reasonably priced, those photos are better as if by magic alone, just because they were made with that new gear. Hmm, isn't that special? The issue doesn't come from them. It comes from where they are getting the information, namely online sprinkle with a little bit of wishful thinking as opposed to real world experience and a proper understanding of what good photography is or could be. Some people even seem to be disconnected from the realities associated with the cost of manufacturing good in Germany versus other regions of the world. They are disconnected from the true cost of stuff, from the principle of supply and demand, and also our businesses are run. Profit is not a bad word. I don't mean you must get a degree from photography school or have an MBA to understand all of this. I'm just saying talk to a photographer, not an influencer, a photographer from before social media, pick up a few photography books, look at the photos and read photographer stories and personal experiences about those photos, explaining their creative process, their work, the why and what inspired them to make these photos. The reasons photographers make photos has nothing to do with sharpness, technical price, or the equipment they use. It usually has everything to do with emotions, wanting to shed light on a given situation or subject, your own curiosity about a given situation or a specific topic, and storytelling. It has to do with a good subject, good light, good colors, contrast, juxtaposition, and creativity. It also has to do with having something to say or desire to leave something behind once they're gone. Photographers have this artistic and creative drive which has everything to do with chasing their passion in making connections to get the photos or the story. They obsess over it 
they obsess over everything but the equipment. They don't talk about the equipment unless asked about what camera or lens they generally use or when they're sponsored by a brand, then they're kind of obligated to talk about the camera and the lenses they use. They're paid for it, it's in their contract. Essentially, a photographer doesn't really care what he uses. It's just a tool. A photographer uses what works for him or may do with what he has because the resulting image is more important than what was used to make it. The camera brand or model is not that important. Only the final images. Those who shift the focus on the gear, are they really photographers? Or are they marketers? Think about this one for a minute. Let me remind you that in 1953, Virginia Shaw was the only second amateur photographer to win the Pulitzer Prize for Photography, or award-winning photograph, Rescue on Pitt River Bridge, made in Redding, California, with a Kodak Brownie. Compared to this camera, that's essentially a glorified pinhole camera with a lens slapped on it. Just goes to show the equipment doesn't really matter in the end, only the resulting image do. I cannot tell you what a good photo is because it's different for everyone, for different reasons. What I'm saying is a camera doesn't make any photos. The gear does not matter as much as some people seem to think it does. It really doesn't. I'm not denying that I love the gear and the fact that I have a lot of expensive gear doesn't mean my photos are better because of it. What kills me is when people mention the equipment they use as if to say their photos should be considered of better value or quality just because of the brand or the money they spent on the gear they use to take their photos with. That's just plain silly. This brings me to my relationship with Leica. I have no professional relationship with Leica aside from giving them my money in exchange for cameras and lenses. To Leica, I'm just a good paying client. I've been their customers for a few years now on a personal level and in no particular order. I know and get along with some of the people who work at Leica, specifically at the Leica stores in Paris and a couple of people at the Paris Leica service center. They know me and I know them within that relationship. I'm their client, that's the extent of it. I've given Leica a whole lot of money. I currently own seven modern Leica M cameras and 15 Leica M lenses, a mix of vintage and modern lenses, plus a bunch of Leica accessories. And these are not my first Leica cameras and lenses. Yeah, Leica and I go back a few years. I'm not telling you what I own to win a big, to win a big one competition, you know? Where's the biggest one in the room? If you get what I'm saying. I'm simply establishing that I'm financially responsible and that I've experienced with the M system going back a few years. Hmm. Financially responsible. I like the sound of it. And that's completely accurate. Money bones are all in my pockets. Yes. And being a bad influence and a bad example is also one of the many public services I freely provide. I use the Lake M system extensively for it. Even then at times, I'm not sure I have a clue as to what I'm talking about. I don't even have the authority to review Leica cameras and lenses or even express my opinion on photography in general. I'm not a photographer. I'm just a regular guy, no better than you, who happens to make photos for work and for the passion I have for photography. The passion I have is all emotionally connected for me. It comes from when I was younger, at a time when I was just making memories and keepsakes. As I got older, it grew into telling stories I shared online using photography. A little later on, with the advent of social media, my photography changed from storytelling to creating content for clients and myself. To now that I'm in my 50s with young children, I'm back to making memories and keepsakes all over again. From the time I first picked up a camera when I was eight, I never really changed. I stayed young at art. My passion always remained the same. It never really waned. Anyways, I do love the gear. There's no denying it. It's why as a child I picked up a camera in the first place. But gear is secondary to my creative process and my work. What I'm sure of is I'm not just talking about a camera or a lens on the app for a few days to gain YouTube views. I'm simply sharing my personal experience about what I own and use daily for my photography, both on a professional level as an Instagram food influencer and a personal level as a passionate storyteller, a husband, and a father. The vastness of my ignorance and everything related to photography in Toleka is huge. I don't deny that. In that big one contest, I'm a big loser. MTF charts, 
like electrocardiograms, I have no clue what they actually mean, and I really don't care. How many elements or groups of elements are in a lens, that's Greek to me. Version, rendition, sharpness, historical facts, serial number, when the lens was made, how many aperture blade the lens has, wide open, it makes no difference to me if a lens has five aperture blade or 20. Who designed what, I have no clue or real interest in. What interests me is the reason why and how I use the gear I use. That I can talk about and also show you the photos I make with that gear. That was then, this is now. After a couple of conversations with Steven and using original steel rim lenses to compare them with the new steel rim classic reissue, I have a newfound interest in serial number significance, batch version, the different lens rendition, and who designed what lenses. When you want to achieve a specific look, this knowledge is extremely valuable. What I can make, thanks to those cameras and lenses, that is relevant to a photography discussion. Our sharper lenses, at f5.6, our lenses seem sharp to me. How many megapixel the camera has is not that important. If you base a purchase decision on this YouTube lens review alone, you're making it after seeing a very long YouTube video made by an Instagram food influencer. Me, if you don't like your purchase, it's on you. I have zero qualification to make camera gear recommendation. I'm paid to you. That's how I pay the bills. It doesn't make a difference to my bottom line if you purchase or not any Leica camera gear. I really don't care. Your finances will be better if you don't. I should know. Because nowadays, an old smartphone is pretty much all you need to make photos and videos, even for my kind of work. Hmm. All I really need is a smartphone. I'm not kidding. The message I want to spread is often the problem is where people are getting the information about photography and camera gear has very little to do with photography and a lot to do with ego stroking, quote unquote bragging, getting views to gain followers or selling cameras lenses and other photography related equipment to make and post process said photos these people are there to make a buck sell camera gears preset merge online workshops have you listened to a sponsored bit they're not making these videos to help with your photography or make your job easier as a photographer that's not their primary goal there's nothing wrong with what they're doing that's how they pay their bills it's their job that's also the state of social media today it should really be called marketing media. There's way more marketing than social happening across all social media platforms. Calling them ad media would be more appropriate. The social aspect of it all has never been there to start with, only the illusion did. Let's not throw that baby out with the bathwater just yet. Thanks to social media, I've met some incredible people I would never have crossed paths with, including Steven and all of you watching this right now. Also, thanks to social media, I did earn a good living. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Places where attributes such as megapixel, sharpness, color science. What the what is color science anyways? Could someone explain that one to me? Come on, man. Only shooting raw and post-process negates that completely. Places where how many frames a second you can take. Here's the key word, take. Good photos are made. They're created, not taken. Places where those attributes can sell your dream that more megapixels, sharper images, more details, creamier bokeh and better colors are equal to better photography. Slap a filter on it, it's a good photo. There goes your color science right out the window, sponsored by my presets. Link in the description below. Let's be real here for a minute. Uh, yeah, please don't look for a link in the description below. I don't use or sell any presets. The only links you'll probably find down there is a link to my DP, David, filming this right now, to Steven's Instagram, to my Patreon, and my LinkedIn profile, nothing else. If you can take away only one thing from all of this, this is it. The best way to avoid bad advice about photography gear, figure out what this person's intentions are. If they have any intentions that would benefit them, immediately, immediately toss it out or take it with a massive grain of salt. You're being sold a dream. That new camera gear, a certain camera brand, a plug-in, a program, or other people's presets will improve your photography. They will not. There's an easy fix. Step away from online forum about photography. Don't visit camera gear website. Stop constantly watching camera gear reviews. 
and stop looking at social media for photos you can take. Don't be like a junkie looking for dopamine when showing off and bragging online about that new gear you just purchased or that photo you just took. It's not a contest, never was. There's absolutely nothing to win. The solution is to start using the camera gear you have now until it falls apart, until it's no longer fixable. Use your gear to make photos you can call your own instead of taking photos others have already taken. Using the same exact equipment they use, applying the same preset they sold you to the photos you copied from them. Thinking these photos will do as good on your social media as it did on their own social media, they won't. They will not bring you more validation, satisfaction, more clients or followers. Instead of learning a new lens, or how to work a new camera, spend time with the camera and lens you know, the device in your hands today. Learn new approaches to photography with it, be it only a smartphone or a five-year-old entry-level crop sensor camera with a kit lens. Only using what you already own in new ways will improve the photos you make. Let's be brutally honest, a new camera or a new lens will not improve your photography one bit or how you feel about yourself. Better camera doesn't make you a better photographer, only making better photos, no matter what gear you use, will do that for you. Your photos don't have to be technically perfect. Making better photos today than you did yesterday, using the same old camera and lenses you've been using for a while, will definitely make you feel a whole lot better. Wow. I didn't, I didn't even know I could make this with that old thing. Now that's something to write home about. That's something to strive for. Photography wise, you're here today at this skill level. Buying new camera gear today guarantees that tomorrow you're still gonna be here at the same skill level as today with less money in your pockets. That's a guarantee you can count on. You can take that one to the bank and it will take you even longer to get better now that you have new gear because you'll have to master that new gear before you can grow as a photographer. It takes me an average two years before wrapping my head around a new camera or a new lens. And I mean a new focal length, I'm a slow learner. Then it takes me a couple more years to get good with it. I'm really a little slow. Upgrading every two years is insane. Just when I start to know a camera, upgrade to a newer camera, I need to wrap my head around all over again. That's just crazy. I never claimed I was sane or SMRT smart. I'm not any better than anyone. I've done it many times. It's a vicious circle. A circle only gets you back to where you started from. Wait a minute, I'll be there. I didn't even realize we came full circle. Didn't we start this video here? Anyway, you just end up chasing your tail. It doesn't get you anywhere. It makes you look kind of silly. It really does. To improve your photography, Stop the insanity. New gear will do nothing for you, says the guy talking about a new 4,000 euro lens and has so much gear it's not even funny. That's, uh, yeah, that's really rich. But there's always a but. It's my four 35 millimeter M lenses. It's not that different from my other three 35 millimeter M lenses, aside from being softer, wide open, prone to flare, smaller and lighter than my other two modern Leica M35 lenses, but otherwise more or less the same. Stop focusing on the gear used, start focusing on the end result, the photos you make. Print your photos, look at your photos, and I mean really look at them. Put them up in your home and in your office. Start learning from yourself, using your own photos to figure out how you could have made them even better with the camera and lens you currently own. By shifting your focus, I can assure you, you will change how you think about photography and what makes a good image good. I'm simply saying it's really not the gear. It never was. When you finally make that switch, on the end result, the photos you make as opposed to the gear you use, for sure your photography will improve no matter what you use. Nothing rekindles the passion one has for photography like leveling up your photography game. When you come to terms that good photography has nothing to do with the gear, the sharpness, or how many megapixels the camera has, and everything to do with the subject matter, the light and the composition, you'll stop wanting that new lens or camera someone else is pushing online. You might even see the world differently, and maybe you'll even start using only one focal length, and if you do film, maybe one or two film stocks, and only one way to make your photos. And I mean either in landscape, or in portrait orientation, 
bring some sort of visual cohesion to your work, but what do I know? I'm not a photographer. <laughs> My dream is that one day people will ask you and me when looking at our photos, I love your work, what's your creative process? What inspired you? How did you even see that? How did you come up with this composition? As opposed to where was it taken and what camera did you use? It's not going to happen overnight. The problem is you buy a cello, you own a cello. Practice and learn how to play the cello for a few years and maybe perhaps you can eventually call yourself a musician. But when you buy a camera and a lens, right away you're a photographer, come on. There's no need to practice and learn 4G. I don't know, maybe a little while before you can call yourself a photographer. What we've been sold is if your photos are not good enough, it's because your camera is not good enough. How does that make any sense at all? Would better pots and pans make Gordon Ramsay a better chef? Would they make you a better cook? No, that's not how it works. And I should know. I bought my wife better pots and pans. It didn't make any difference. Sadly, her cooking did not improve at all. Not even a little. That was not money well spent. And some people still think that better camera will make them a better photographer. That's just loopy. But then again, a fool on their money or soon parted. This reminds me, I'm selling an E46 screw-on Leica character lens hood that adds art dignity to your photos. Like new, almost never use, for only 175 euros. Shipping included. I am. It's a deal. I've been making photos since 1978. I'm not going to pretend I'm a photographer. I'm not. I just happen to own a lot of cameras and lenses. I do. I've been making photos for 45 years and I'm still practicing and learning new approaches to photography. I just love making photos. If you don't believe that I'm not a photographer, go take a look at my LinkedIn profile. I just happen to have a true passion for photography, plus a lot of cameras and lenses. That's it. Where we are is wishing what the latest and greatest gear in the world, the sharpest lenses and the latest super great big 61 megapixel sensor, 120 frames a second, Swiss Army computer of a camera that does absolutely nothing for us. Where we can be is using what we have today to make photos that speak to us and perhaps even to our viewers. Thinking about what connects with us emotionally first, how can I highlight that part I want to visually communicate before pressing the shutter? Or you could also see it this way. What do I have to gain by making this photo and what's in it for you, the viewer? Then figure out the best way to show it. To make this as simple as possible, a good photo is like a good joke. If you need to explain it, is it really that good? With that in mind, put some thoughts into your compositions before pressing the shutter. The gear has absolutely nothing to do with this very personal aspect of the photo making process. That most important part, your very own individual creativity, vision, or the emotion you want to convey. What is it exactly you're trying to communicate with this photo you're about to make? Gear cannot do this for you. Perhaps this is why I have mad respect for wedding photographers. All they do is they deal with emotions. You can clearly see what the photo is all about. No explanation required. In my opinion, wedding photography is one of the greatest photo jobs one can aspire to have. You get to spend your time with people having the best day of their life. If you ask me, that's an awesome way to earn a living. A lens is a lens. Find a focal length that works for you. Put it on a camera. Work that lens and camera until it falls apart all limits your creativity before upgrading, be it a fixed focal length or a zoom lens. Listen, between you and I, the camera you have now in your hands was groundbreaking when it was first released. Capable and outstanding in all areas, this is your camera. There are many like it, but this one is yours. Your camera is your best friend. It is your life. You must master it as you must master your life. Without you, your camera is useless. Uh, sorry, I digress. Anyways, your camera was better than any other camera made before it. Anyone with an ounce of creativity could make great photos with it. So can you. I have absolutely zero talent. I just work at it. If I can do it, anybody can. I'm not that special. Okay, maybe and according to my wife, I'm the kind of special that rides the short bus to school special. Remember, I'm slow. But certainly not anything special in the talents department, that's for sure. I've taken my share of photos until I decided to make them instead of taking them. Level up your photography game with what you have now. Create or emulate.
It's way cooler to make better photos with old camera gear than making the same average photos with a new camera or a new lens. Soak this one up for a minute, man. It's way cooler to make better photos with your old camera gear than it is to make the same old average photos with new camera gear. It sure is. Stop comparing yourself with others. Stop caring about what other people think of you, the camera you use, or the photos you make. If you only knew how little other people think of you, you wouldn't give them a second thought because most people don't ever think about you at all. I know, I've been there. In my 20s, I cared about what I thought everybody thought of me. Mm. In my 40s, I stopped caring so much, and now that in my 50s, I've come to the realization no one was ever thinking about you or me in the first place. Everyone else is so consumed with what they have going, they don't have any time to think about anyone else. Let go of your fears, deflate your ego a little, spend that energy on your creativity, and see what comes. That's how you'll grow as a photographer. Just make photos for the joys of making photos, to bring something new to the world, to tell stories, or maybe even to simply share your corner of paradise with others online. All in all, my main message is please stop thinking new camera gear will help improve your photography. It won't. Just go out there with an old iPod if you must have music while making photos. Leave your smartphone at home. Unless you only have a smartphone to make photos with, then disconnect from social media for a while. Just go make photos with what you have today. You don't need the latest and greatest gear to make good photos. A lot of the photos I share on social media platform, even photos made for my client, are made with just an old smartphone. Finally, my wife, who is not a photographer, understands that sharp photos are not necessarily good photos. All in all, this new Leica lens, which is not 100% sharp, wide open or even at f2, can be used to make good photos, even wide open. Because as she so nicely reminded me recently, I once told her years ago, the most important equipment a photographer has is never in his hands. It's usually a few inches behind the camera. Use your head. A message in a bottle. Thank you for watching. Don't subscribe. Have a life. Be creative. Go make new photos of your own. See you around. I can shoot all day. I got stamina. Turtleneck on with my camera. Yeah. Stay creamy, man. That's what they say. Shoes laced up and I came to play.